Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from our channel, Immortal News. Today we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with their passing announcements made in the last 24 hours. Additionally, we have special tributes and in the news section health updates about the legendary supermodel Linda Evangelista. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 9. Haydn Gwynn a celebrated beacon in theater and television. Haydn Gwynn, the accomplished English actress, passed away on October 20th at the age of 66, just one month after a cancer diagnosis. Born on October 5th in 1957 in Hurstpierpoint, Sussex, Gwynn's passion for the arts was palpable throughout her life. Best known for her BAFTA-nominated performance in Drop the Dead Donkey and her award-winning role in Billy Elliot the Musical on Broadway, Gwynn's talent spanned both stage and screen. Over the years, she showcased her versatile talent across a spectrum of roles, from her portrayal of Camilla in The Windsors to her work with the Royal Shakespeare Company. One of her last notable performances was as Pam Lee in The Great British Bake Off Musical in 2023. Her dedication to her craft was undeniable, and she received four Olivier Award nominations throughout her career. Beyond her work in the arts, Gwynne was an academic, having taught English at the University of Rome, La Sapienza, and was fluent in French and Italian. She was deeply committed to charitable causes, working with Sightsavers International to combat blindness in developing nations. A voice in public discussions, she was among the signatories opposing Scottish independence in 2014. Remembered for her exceptional talent, commanding presence, and commitment to causes she believed in, Haydn Gwynn leaves behind a legacy that will resonate in the world of entertainment for generations to come. Tribute to Haydn Gwynn. Number 8. Judy Balaban, Hollywood's intimate witness and champion of civil rights. Judy Balaban, intimately interwoven with the fabric of Hollywood's golden age, passed away at the age of 91 in Los Angeles on October 19th. Born to Tilly and Barney Balaban on October 13, 1932, in Chicago, she bore witness to the cinematic world from its very roots. Her father served as the president of Paramount from 1936 to 1964. Her personal experiences in the realm of showbiz were nothing short of cinematic. She was one of Grace Kelly's cherished bridesmaids during her wedding to Prince Rainier of Monaco, and she navigated relationships with well-known figures like Montgomery Clift, Merv Griffin, and Tony Franciosa. Beyond these personal tales, Balaban passionately advocated for civil rights, dedicating years to the ACLU of Southern California. In a moment that captures the zeitgeist of the 1960s, Balaban recounted using LSD as a therapeutic endeavor sharing these sessions with Hollywood legend Cary Grant and his wife Betsy Drake. Judy's ties to the entertainment industry ran deep, from her marriages to Hollywood agent Jay Cantor, actor Tony Franciosa, and actor Don Quine, to her brother, jazz musician Red Balaban, and half-brother film producer Burt Balaban. Her literary contribution, The Bridesmaids Grace Kelly, Princess of Monaco and Six Intimate Friends, and her appearances in various documentaries have sealed her legacy as a vital contributor to the tapestry of Hollywood history. She leaves behind her daughters, Amy and Nina, and a lineage enriched by her cousin, actor Bob Balaban. The world bids adieu to a woman who is not just a spectator, but an active participant in Hollywood's most iconic chapters. Tribute to Judy Balaban Number 7. Rachel Chase, a beacon of fitness and inspiration. Rachel Chase, the celebrated fitness influencer, IFBB figure pro bodybuilder, and a shining light in the world of bodybuilding, passed away suddenly on October 20th. Born in New Zealand in 1979, Rachel's love for sports was evident from her early years, exploring gymnastics, netball, and surfing. Her early foray into fashion modeling at just five years old was a hint of the multifaceted talent she was to become. 
Rachelle's journey into the world of weightlifting began in her teenage years, and she quickly made waves in the fitness community. With a dedicated following of 1.4 million on her Facebook page, Rachelle's commitment and passion for fitness were evident. Her accolades are a testament to her dedication. With impressive finishes at prestigious events like the Melbourne Pro, NZ Pro, and notably making history as the first Kiwi woman to compete at the Olympia in 2011. Even after retiring from the competitive bodybuilding stage, Rachel's commitment to fitness never waned. She continued to inspire, becoming a renowned fitness model, gracing numerous magazine covers, including the coveted Oxygen magazine. Described by close friend Keith O'Connell as one of the kindest beautiful souls, Rachel Chase's legacy in the fitness and bodybuilding world will forever serve as an inspiration to many. Her dedication, passion, and indomitable spirit will be deeply missed, but never forgotten. Tribute to Rachel Chase. Number 6. Lasse Berghagen, a musical luminary and heart of Swedish entertainment. Lasse Berghagen, renowned Swedish singer, songwriter, and actor, passed away on October 19th, following complications from heart surgery. He was 78. Born on the 13th of May 1945 in Stockholm, Berghagen's career spanned several decades and saw him don multiple hats, from a recording artist to a beloved television presenter. Coming into prominence with his representation of Sweden in the Eurovision Song Contest 1975 with the memorable Jenny Jenny, he further endeared himself to the Swedish public through his cherished role as the presenter of Allsang på Skansen from 1994 to 2003. The show's viewer base skyrocketed under his helm, speaking volumes of his magnetic presence. Berghagen's collaboration with notable figures like Benny Anderson in the 1960s produced timeless classics. Beyond music, he shone in theater, notably with his iconic portrayal of Flirty Nut. His contributions weren't limited to Sweden. He also made significant inroads in Germany, leaving an indelible mark on their entertainment landscape. A recipient of numerous accolades, Berghagen was honored with awards such as the Leonard Highland TV Award, and the prestigious St. Eric's Medallion. His commitment to causes close to his heart was evident in his chairmanship of Foreningen Artister Mott Narcotica during the 1980s. Behind the limelight, Berghagen was a loving father and husband, remembered by his daughters Malin and Maria, and his long-standing wife Eva. Sweden mourns the loss of a true entertainer and a gem of its cultural tapestry. Tribute to Lasse Berghagen. Number 5. Jamie Tiller, Unearthing Musical Treasures and Shaping Electronic Legacy Jamie Tiller, the co-founder of the renowned label Music From Memory, passed away tragically on October 15 following an accident. A resident of Berlin in his recent years, Tiller was originally from London and had established the pivotal Music From Memory alongside Taco Reyenga in Amsterdam in 2013. Their vision was unique shining a spotlight on forgotten music as much as they did on contemporary releases. Having a foundational experience as a record store buyer, especially with Amsterdam's Red Light Records, Jamie's dedication to music was unmatched. With Tiller at the helm, music from memory introduced the world to artists like Suso Saiz, Suzanne Kraft, Ramsey and Yusu, among many others. In 2014, furthering their commitment to diverse music, Tiller and Rienga launched Second Circle, a sister imprint highlighting their own productions and explorative music genres. Renowned for his impeccable taste, Tiller's DJ sets had an international reputation. His ability to offer eclectic, buoyant selections took him to stages from Mexico City to Thailand. Tiller's approach to music with a perfect blend of humility and passion made him an inspiration to many. As fans and music enthusiasts grieve, his partners at Music From Memory promise a forthcoming celebration of Tiller's monumental legacy. Tribute to Jamie Tiller.
Number 4. Mo Amory, a tireless advocate and pillar of Alberta's Legislative Assembly. Mo Amory, born as Mohamed Amiri on September 20, 1954 in Lebanon, passed away on October 19 at the age of 69. A devoted public servant and resilient politician, Amory represented Calgary East in the Legislative Assembly of Alberta as a progressive conservative. His journey began when he moved to Canada in 1974, immersing himself in Alberta's culture and politics. His tenure in the Legislative Assembly starting from 1993 was marked by significant legislative initiatives. Among the most notable was the Maintenance Enforcement Amendment Act, which sought to address the issue of child support payment arrears and bills to extend primary education to include kindergarten. His dedication to wildlife protection also led to the Wildlife Amendment Act in 1996. Throughout his political career, Amory was known to voice concerns that deeply impacted his constituents, even if it meant breaking party lines. However, it wasn't just politics for Amory. He was deeply involved in his community, particularly with associations in Calgary East. His commitment to public service was also reflected in his son, Mickey, who followed in his father's footsteps, winning a seat in the Alberta legislature in 2019. Survived by his wife, Mary, and their five children, Mickey, Lila, Lena, Laura, and Malak, Mo Amory's legacy stands as a testament to his unwavering commitment to the people of Alberta his passion for legislative reform, and his profound love for his community. Tribute to Mo Amory. Number 3. David Peary Webster, a stalwart of Scottish sports and Highland traditions. David Peary Webster, an esteemed Scottish author, historian, sports promoter, and an icon in the world of weightlifting, passed away at the age of 95 on October 19. Born on the 18th of September 1928, Webster's journey began in Aberdeen where he pursued a degree in physical education and initially took up teaching. However, his calling was evidently in the realm of sports and its promotion in Scotland. From serving as the chairman of Scottish weightlifting to attending three Olympic Games as part of the Scottish delegation, Webster's contributions to weightlifting were monumental. Not just a promoter, he was a competitor, coach, and referee in weightlifting and powerlifting. His dedication to sport led him to receive an Order of the British Empire in 1995, a testament to his tireless commitment. Webster's profound love for traditional Scottish sports manifested in his relentless promotion of the Highland Games. He played an instrumental role in bringing the Games to the global stage, eventually founding the World Highland Games Heavy Events Championships in 1980, a celebration of traditions like stone lifting and caber tossing. His influence also extended to the domain of strongman contests. Webster promoted the first televised strongman contest in 1955, and was pivotal in the creation of the world's strongest man television show and the Arnold Strongman classic. As the curtain closes on a life so vividly dedicated to sport and Scottish tradition, the legacy of David Peary Webster, the guardian of Highland Games and a champion of Scottish sports, remains unmatched. Tribute to David Peary Webster. Number 2. Burdette Bertie Halderson, a basketball colossus and the pride of CU Buffs. Burdette Bertie Halderson, the two-time Olympic gold medalist and Colorado University basketball luminary, passed away at 89 on October 13 in Colorado Springs. Holding a significant place in the annals of CU Buffs history, Halderson's contribution to the sport has left a memorable mark. Inducted into the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame in 1977, and CU's Athletic Hall of Fame. In 1999, Halderson was CU basketball's first representative in the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. With an inaugural season that saw him average 10.6 points and 7.2 rebounds, he further engraved his name in the history books with a remarkable senior season, leading the Buffs to the Big Seven Championship. 
owning numerous program records, from rebounding averages to remarkable single-game feats, Alderson's legacy also touches the international arena, winning Olympic golds in 1956 and 1960. He played alongside basketball legends like Oscar Robertson and Jerry West, with their 1960 team being inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 2010. Off the court, Halderson was a true Coloradoan, setting up his gas and oil distribution business in Colorado Springs. His significance in CU's legacy is echoed by athletic director Rick George and men's basketball coach Tad Boyle, both acknowledging not just his athletic prowess, but his outstanding character. Tribute to Burdette Halderson. Breaking news, news one. The rock world was recently abuzz with concern when Thurston Moore, Sonic Youth co-founder, abruptly canceled his much anticipated book tour for Sonic Life. In a candid interview with the New York Times, Moore broke his silence, sharing that he's been grappling with atrial fibrillation, a heart rhythm disorder, for several years. Recently, the condition escalated, leaving him occasionally so drained that walking around his neighborhood became a challenge. Despite these hurdles, Moore's spirit remains undeterred. The prognosis is very good, he affirmed, raising hopes of his fans worldwide. While he's been advised against flying for now, Moore is gearing up to attend upcoming book events in the UK. In the midst of personal revelations, Moore also addressed the whispers of a potential Sonic Youth reunion. His response? While many yearn for it, Moore believes the chances are slim, citing the complexities involved. Regardless of what the future holds, fans are rallying behind the rock legend, wishing him a swift recovery and continued success. News 2. Legendary supermodel Linda Evangelista, 58, shed light on her tumultuous journey with breast cancer and the aftermath of an ill-fated cosmetic treatment during an appearance on The View. In December 2018, a routine mammogram unveiled her breast cancer, prompting Evangelista to undergo a double mastectomy. Further, last year, doctors identified cancer in her pectoral muscle, requiring additional surgeries, radiation, and chemotherapy. Discussing her treatment, Evangelista candidly remarked on the challenging side effects of her medication. They're horrible. The hormone suppressors. They make you feel old. Joy Behar, 81, inquired about the value of life post-illness. Evangelista's resonating response emphasized the unparalleled challenge chemotherapy posed despite her numerous surgeries. On the topic of scars, she stated, I think scars are trophies. I'm good with scars. Linda, always candid and brave in sharing her experiences, also opened up about the devastating effects of a botched cool sculpting procedure, which saw her fat cells abnormally enlarge, leading to her self-imposed seclusion for six years. She relayed her story of depression, and the positive turning point when she decided she wanted to live life again. Evangelista's resilience and openness serve as a beacon for many facing health and self-image battles. Number 1. Robert Ferris, a pillar of civic duty and enduring legacy in Derry. Robert Ferris, a stalwart of Derry's civic and business landscape, passed away peacefully on October 19th, surrounded by his loving family. Born in 1933, Mr. Ferris dedicated much of his life to the betterment and advancement of his community. Launching his early career at Leslie Stewart's photography studio, Mr. Ferris wore many hats, from shirt cutter to newspaper contributor to his pivotal role managing the embassy court. Through his work, he met influential figures, further embedding himself in Derry's heart. During the turbulent times of the Troubles, his resilience was evident as he worked tirelessly on restoring bombed structures symbolizing hope and rebirth for the city. Mr. Ferris's commitment to Derry was displayed in his participation in over 21 committees, ranging from trade chambers to healthcare boards. His deep-seated interest in human rights and public service found him serving on boards such as the Police Complaints and the Standing Advisory Commission on Human Rights. His dedication to the spiritual and cultural life of the community was evident in his long-term association with St. Peter's Church of Ireland and his passionate involvement with the Institute Football Club. A man of immense stature and service, 
Robert Ferris leaves behind a city touched by his influence and devotion. He is mourned by his wife Elsa, children Deborah, Jeffrey, and Hillary, and the entire Derry community.